All right, our next comic, she started comedy at the age of 60. She's a little hard of hearing, so I want you guys to laugh loud so she can appreciate it. Put your hands together for Linda Landau. I go to a lot of comedy shows and I'm a little bit offended by the way male comics talk about their wives and girlfriends and mothers. They say some of the most disgusting and gross and misogynistic things. Misog Everybody here knows what misogynistic is? Oh. Yes. To put down or degrade women. Anyway, my attitude, for example, and we're all guilty of it, you've heard the expression, uh, uh, why should he buy the cow if he can get the milk for free? Ladies, we maybe should be teaching our daughters, why should you buy the pig if you can get the sausage for free? <laughs> <laughs> and my, my attitude on these male comedians is not to get mad, it's to get even. So welcome to Anti-Misogyny 101. Oh. <laughs> uh, a, man, a husband and wife are watching TV and he turns to his wife and he says, oh darling, you're so beautiful. Why did God make you so beautiful? And she says, so that you would love me, dear. So then he thinks a little bit and he says, but you're so stupid. Why did God make you so stupid? She okay. says, so that I would love you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> the woman is giving her little boy a bath, and he points to his testicles, and he says, Mommy, are these my brains? <laughs> Not yet, dear. <laughs> <laughs> a woman takes her little boy to the doctor, and they're slightly concerned that his penis may be a little bit small. The doctor says, take him home, give him lots of food, make him lots of pancakes. So the kid comes down the next next morning, big stack of pancakes on the table. Mommy, 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 are these all for me? No, dear, only two are for you. The rest are for your father. <laughs> <laughs> two, men are, uh, two men are playing golf when a funeral procession goes by. One man puts down his clubs, walks to the side, drops his head, folds his hand, and stands at attention. The second man says, I had, and then until the funeral procession goes by. The funeral procession goes by and comes back. The, sec, uh, the other man says, I had no idea you were so religious. The first man says, well, it's the least I could do. We were married for 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, a funeral is, going, is on its way to the cemetery for a burial. It's a cold, icy winter day. The hearse hits a patch of ice, goes off the road, hits a tree, back door opens, hearse slides out, the coffin, the coffin slides out, the lid pops open, and who sits up? He's alive. So everybody, of course the burial was canceled. <laughs> uh, everyone goes home, and uh, as uh, life goes on, and or not, uh, some years later, we're back at the funeral home uh, for the second uh, funeral of this poor man, and the wife goes to the funeral director as they're about getting ready to put the coffin in the hearse. She goes to the funeral director and she says, please, drive carefully. I don't want a repeat of what happened last time. <laughs> Uh, I love cemetery jokes because the only people you can offend are dead. The, the, a woman is crying profusely over a, a, a stone in the, in, the, in the cemetery and a man walks over to her and says, was this a relative? Close friend, she says, no, it was my husband's first wife. If only she had lived. <laughs> a man and a woman are in bed, and he starts, he starts uh, caress, feeling her up. And he puts his hand on her right side, puts his hand on her right side, and then he goes across her chest and over to her left breast and behind her head, and she's getting all excited. And then he puts his hand in her crotch, and then he rolls over and turns on the TV. 
She says, why did you stop? He says, I found the remote. <laughs> And he said, says, oh, if these could give milk, I could get rid of the cow. And he puts his hand on her crotch, and he said, if this could give eggs, I could get rid of the chickens. She puts her hand on his crotch, and she said, if this could get hard, I could get rid of your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Rings. She picks it up. Hello. Uh huh. Okay. No problem. Have a good time. He puts. She puts the phone down. Turns to the man next to her. Uh, and the man next to her says, "Who was that?" She said, "My husband." He says, "Oh, I better get out of here." She says, "You've got plenty of time." He called to tell me he was playing cards with you. <laughs> She tells her, Mama, 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 I met a guy, he's just like Dad. Mother says, what do you want from me, sympathy? <laughs> anyway, I want to close, I'm getting the light. I don't know, I'm 71 years old. Can't you give me a special dispensation? <laughs> I'm getting the light, so I wanted to tell you one gross joke before I left, I close, but I'm going to skip it because or against gross jokes. I'm going to tell you a story instead. No. No. Tell the joke? Yeah. Oh, it's gross. Do it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> the woman is hosting her Mahjong group. And her husband, her husband, her husband comes in to say goodnight. She says, come over, I'll give you a kiss goodnight. So he walks over to her, unzips his fly, takes out his penis, she gives it a kiss, he closes it up and goes to bed. One of the other women said, that's most unusual. The woman says, the hostess says, did you ever smell his breath? Okay, anyway, a friend of mine was born in Montreal. She was the youngest of four, uh, four kids. Her older sister got married, moved to Toronto. And at 16, she went to visit her. Now, my friend as, had never been on a date, never been kissed from religious family. And so her sister fixed her up with a young man from the neighborhood, Hal Schelle-Greenberg. And apparently in Toronto, they have a fair in the summer. And Hal Schelle-Greenberg took Esty to the fair. So they had rides and games. and. Games of chance, he threw some balls, he won a plate, and he handed it to Esty. So she was so proud and so thrilled. She said, walking around the fair, people looked at us, and I was just so at, at this cute couple and what he'd done, and she was so thrilled. So it was time to take her home, and she said, Oh, is he gonna kiss me? Is he gonna kiss me? And he walks her to the door and he says, can I ask you a question? And she says, oh, this is it, he's going to kiss me. He says, can I have the plate? <laughs> anyway, my name is Linda Landau, and I hope that I have, <laughs> I hope that I have helped, uh, I want you all to applaud real loud when I finish, because I want to make it to the finals and teach these men a thing or two. Yeah. One, one small step for Linda Landau, one giant leap for all the women in this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y